Yes! If you're like me, then you're no doubt a big fan of this podcast, The Pope on Film. I mean, who is it nowadays in this day and age at this juncture? But only real fans, true hardcore fans that have been with us since the beginning would know two facts about us, about you and I. Two undeniably really real and in no way made up on the spot facts about America's hottest podcasting couple, Bunny and Steve. First and foremost, Bunny, is the fact that, and I don't know how many people know this, but you are in fact a celebrated Lego master builder. So tell us, Bunny, what massive Lego sculpture are you working on now? Uh, uh, well, massive, massive. Uh, yeah. I am trying to represent uh, the the angst and suffering of the people in a giant Lego model of a giant Lego construction man. Okay. Very deep. The everyday working Lego that I am trying to represent here. I mean, I don't think people appreciate Lego as an artistic medium. Yeah. You know? I like where you're going with this. And I can't wait to see the finished project. It's amazing. And the well, second I am, thing. I am sorry to say to the Andy Warhol cult of art, we the people will express ourselves however we need to, even if that means in Legos. Yeah. Um, Andy Warhol can suck it. Yeah. And the second thing that you would know about me is that I'm a lover of history. I love it, but I'm also a storyteller. And so what we do at this part of the show is I get a story from the history books, maybe one that people don't know too well, and reword it via my own unique storytelling style. And that's what this is, another educationally uneducational installment of Steve's Historic Approximations. Dun, dun. <laughs> or Shap, as I like to call it, repeatedly, annoyingly, whether anyone wants me to or not. Personally, I like the name Shap. It's short and it's cute. It could be the name of an adorable mouse-type Pokemon, I think. Anywho, this week on the old Shappity Shap Shap, we will be discussing the second greatest baseball player of all time. The second greatest baseball player who ever lived, according to me, someone who knows nothing about baseball. Now, it's obvious who the number one greatest baseball player of all time is. That is, of course, Doc Ellis, the pitcher that won five Eastern Division titles in six years and won the World Series in 1971 and who also pitched a no-hitter on June 12, 1970, while baked to the gills on LSD. Yes. Sure, there are a lot of uh, baseball uh, pitchers out there, and maybe they might even be better than Doc Ellis, but have they ever pitched while baked to the gills high as fuck on acid? I don't think so. <laughs> He was also an advocator for ba black baseball players, and he was just amazing. So kudos to Doc Ellis, the world's best baseball player of all time. What? Babe Ruth? Well, did he ever play well on drugs? I don't know if he did. He might. If anyone would have, he might. Yeah. He might. But anyway, let's put a pin on Babe Ruth because Doc Ellis is the number one greatest baseball player of all time, according to me. But this chap is not about Doc Ellis. This chap is about the man who, in my opinion, is right behind Doc Ellis uh, in my wildly unqualified list of the greatest baseball players of all time. 
Um, the number two is a man by the name of Ray Caldwell. Raymond Benjamin Caldwell, an old-timey baseball player who, mag- who, who managed to pull off a feat that to this day is still downright astonishing. So let's talk about this. Ray Caldwell was born in 1888 in Corydon, Pennsylvania, which is a town that barely exists anymore. There used to be like thousands of people living there, but now it's a town of roughly 200 to 300 people, yeah. just south of the border between New York and Pennsylvania. That's uh, Corydon, Pennsylvania. He got his start in baseball in 1910 when he joined the Ohio Pennsylvania League, which was one of many minor league baseball organizations that popped up like weeds or vape shops in the early 1900s. And Ray Caldwell proved to be be a very good pitcher because later that year he was hired by the New York Highlanders who would eventually change their name to the New York Yankees, but I like the New York Highlanders better than Yankees. The New York Yankees? That sounds like something from the Civil War. But if they were still called the New York Highlanders, they could, they could, like, there could be only one. Yes. Like, I dig that. That's a great, that I can, you know, wear a jersey of. Anywho. Uh, yeah, yeah, Ray Caldwell is hired uh, to the New York Highlanders, the New York eventual Yankees. So Raymond Caldwell is definitely in the big leagues now. Uh, Raymond Caldwell, Ray Caldwell, good pitcher, very good pitcher, a great baseball player. But there was one problem. Ray Caldwell partied hard. Yeah. He partied hard and he would party so hard that it would regularly happen where he would just disappear so he would get movie comedy drunk waking up wearing a lampshade like where am I Tijuana I have a game in Topeka at 2 (laughs) o'clock that's how hard Ray Caldwell would party and so Ray Caldwell was missing work because he was literally disappearing, ending up drunk at some random place. And he missed so much work that the New York eventual Yankees traded him to the Red Sox. And the hope was, okay, he's in the Red Sox now. The last place he was in, that that was a toxic environment. This is a better team, uh, more suited for Ray Caldwell. And, uh, yeah, now that he's in this team, a new team, he should calm down. He should settle down. And I'm sure that Ray Caldwell will stop, stop partying now and get on the straight and narrow. Oh, hello, Ray Caldwell. Happy to have you on the team. Here is your roommate, Babe Ruth. Um, okay. Now notorious drinker and partier Ray Caldwell is traveling with the Babe Ruth. To put that into perspective for you, um, listen, Lindsay Lohan, you really got to stay sober now, okay? You got to stop partying. In fact, we got you an AA sponsor. Here he is right now. Uh, Charlie Sheen. <laughs> So teaming up Ray Ray Caldwell with Babe Ruth, not the best idea in the world. So the eventual Yankees trade Ray Caldwell to Boston, and then Boston has had enough, so they boot him, and now he's been kicked out of two major league baseball teams in just nine months. Ray Caldwell was so toxic that no sane team would ever touch him. So in walks the Cleveland Indians. I hate that name so much. Yeah. I have always hated that name. As a child, I hated that name. And I'm so happy that now, slowly but surely, America is catching up to my hatred of the name Cleveland Indians. 
And then the Cleveland Indians did that horrible thing where it's like, okay, we are going to be stopping using the name the Cleveland Indians. And we're going to be stopping it, not now in 2020. We're going to be stopping it at late 2022. So there's still time right now for you to go to your local store and buy exclusive Cleveland Indian merch only for a limited time. And it's like, okay, well, fuck you, Cleveland Indians. I'm just going to call them something else. The Cleveland Racists. Yes. Is what they will now be called for the duration of this chat. Um, The Cleveland Racists are dead set on winning the American League pendant, and they were so desperate for a good pitcher, but how do you rein in a madman like Ray Caldwell? Uh, This was their plan. And Jesus Christ, I don't think this is a good plan, but this was their plan. Uh, Ray Caldwell wakes up day of the day of the big game, totally sober. He goes into the game totally sober. Once the game is over, uh, Ray Caldwell can get as shit faced drunk as he wants, and we will allow him to miss practice the next day. As long as the day after that, he does return to practice, at which time the team will just make him do a crap ton of laps, which will make him sweat the alcohol out of his system. I, I feel like this is just a few inches away from, we need to clean up Ray Caldwell. I have an idea. Leeches. Yeah. You know? Like, this... It, I don't I don't see this to be the greatest idea, but it was like nineteen nineteen we're talking about when everything was black and white, so Yeah. Uh but anyway, Ray Caldwell starts with the Cleveland Racists and he's doing great. He starts out five and one. He won five games, including his most memorable game on September tenth, nineteen nineteen. Let me tell you about it. Okay. Thematically, this is a big game because the Cleveland Racists are playing Ray Caldwell's old team, the New York Eventual Yankees. And Ray Caldwell just says, "Okay, we're 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 uh, we're going up against my old team. I have to win. It. I have to win this game. I know that everyone thinks that I'm a drunk and I'm I'm a partier and all of that sort of stuff, but I absolutely 100% have to win this game, no matter what." I am dead set on winning this. I'm going to get some payback. And Ray Caldwell goes out there on September 10th, 1919. It's slightly overcast, and there's going to be some storms, but they're going to come in later. That should be enough time for uh, the Cleveland Racists and the New York Eventuals to have a really good match. And so they go out there, and Ray Caldwell is just doing absolutely great. He's doing wonderful He pitches eight innings. He gives up only one run on four hits uh, for the whole game. He's doing great, and it looks like the team is going to win. Then the storms came because the weather was fine, but a storm was forecast for later that evening, and both teams hoped to, to, to be able to finish the game before the storm hits. It's almost the end of the game. It's getting to be the ninth inning. Cleveland looks like it's going to be the winner. And uh, the shortstop for the New York eventual Yankees, Joe Duggan, is up to bat. And if Ray Caldwell strikes out Joe Duggan, then Cleveland wins it all. Then Ray Caldwell was struck by fucking lightning. Yes. In the middle of the game. It either hit Ray Caldwell directly because of the steel little uh, thing on top of the baseball hat, or okay, it struck... Okay, okay, wait a second, though. Wait a second, though. See, if they could guarantee that that happens... Once a game, I'd watch baseball. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. 
Yeah, so Just the lightning all of a either sudden, hit... a what? random player from gets either team yeah. just gets hit by a bolt of lightning. <laughs> it's incredible, isn't it? Ray yeah. Caldwell was struck by lightning in the middle of a freaking baseball game. It either hit Ray Caldwell directly on the head or chest area. Or it hit the ground right next to Ray Caldwell. But either way, lightning struck a blinding flash and Ray Caldwell was knocked out cold. Ray Caldwell was hit by lightning right in the middle of a baseball game. There was so much lightning and electricity going through his body that the first player to reach his body and touch him was electrocuted himself. Just from touching Ray Caldwell's body, his body is spread out on the pitcher's mound and his teammates crowd around him, too scared to touch his body and to see if he's alive. They're all worried that he's dead. Ray Caldwell lays there unconscious for five minutes until finally, thankfully, he comes to. His teammates are all, oh, shit, Ray, you just got struck by lightning. We got to we gotta, uh, get you to the hospital. You, you you need to be looked. You need to be looked at. Uh, we thought you had died, but Ray Caldwell says, "I'm not going to the hospital. I need to strike out Joe Dugan." So Ray Caldwell finishes the game after being struck by lightning. Cleveland wins because of Ray Caldwell the man who was struck by lightning and kept playing. Two weeks later, his team would face the eventual Yankees again. And in that game, Ray Caldwell pitched a no-hitter. And Ray Caldwell did not suffer any lasting negative effects from the lightning strike, apart from a severe burn mark on his chest, which would stay there. And I think that that just makes him a badass. You know, having like... Maybe it's like a lightning pattern. Probably not, but that would also be badass. But anyway, that's the story of Ray Caldwell, the second best baseball player ever. Because, yeah, there's better pitchers out there. There are better baseball players out there. But were any of them struck by lightning in the middle of a game? No, Ray Caldwell is one of the best. <laughs> and that is my chef. For this week. Next week, I have no friggin' idea what I'm doing, but it's gonna be good. So join us next week for more up to date movie reviews. Uh, movie reviews? No. Uh, I'm getting my outros mixed up. Join us next week for more educationally uneducational fun with Steve's Historic Approximations! And cut on that.